We're going to take a look at glomerular filtration in this lecture. So in order to form urine, there are three steps. Glomerular filtration is first, and then reabsorption and secretion. So we do these three steps before the urine is ready to be excreted from the body. Glomerular filtration is going to happen in the glomerulus, this capillary bed here. That's where we first filter the plasma, the liquid part of the blood, and make the filtrate. And as the filtrate goes down the renal tubules, we also have reabsorption and secretion going on. In reabsorption, we want to save the valuable things from the urine. So things like glucose and amino acids, vitamins, we're going to reabsorb those and put those back into the peritubular capillaries. Secretion is when we have some extra waste products um, that we didn't filter on the first go around through the glomerulus. We can secrete them into the filtrate and excrete it out into the urine. During glomerular filtration that happens in the renal corpuscle, we're going to be filtering the plasma, but the proteins and the cells in the blood are going to be too big to fit through the capillary walls, so they will stay in the blood and won't go out into the filtrate. The filtration membrane has three layers. There's the glomerular capillary endothelium, so the walls of the capillaries, and they have big fenestrations or pores in them. There's a basement membrane, and that's what prevents the proteins and cells from fitting through those big holes, so they will stay in the blood. And then we also have the inner epithelial layer of Bowman's capsule, which are made out of cells called podocytes. And they have some slit pores or filtration slits in between them, which we can actually adjust their size. So just a big picture reminder where we are when we're doing glomerular filtration. In the renal corpuscle, glomerular filtration is going to happen at the glomerulus, this capillary bed. And also involved is the inner layer of Bowman's capsule, these podocytes. And you can see that they have these feet-like extensions, so that's why they're named podocytes. And they have these filtration slits that are in between them. And the podocytes can actually regulate the size of those filtration slits, and that will affect how much plasma is being filtered out of the blood. The plasma that's filtered out from the glomerulus will then enter Bowman's capsule and then start going down the proximal convoluted tubule. So this shows the filtration membrane in the renal corpuscle. So here's our glomerular capillary. Notice that the capillary wall has big fenestrations or holes in them, and that allows the capillaries to filter out a lot more fluid from the blood than if you had smaller gaps like we find in other capillaries in the body. The basement membrane is in purple, and that's going to prevent the proteins in the blood and the cells in the blood from being filtered out into the urine, so proteins and cells will stay in the blood. And then we have the inner layer of Bowman's capsule, these podocytes. And you can see the foot processes that come off. And in between there, we have these filtration slits. And the podocytes can regulate the size of those filtration slits, and then that will affect how much plasma is getting filtered out as well. The amount of glomerular filtration that occurs depends on the blood pressure in the glomerulus. If the blood pressure increases, then you will filter out more of the plasma from the blood and end up making more filtrate and more urine. If the blood pressure drops, then you're going to filter out less plasma from the blood and make less filtrate and less urine. If the blood pressure gets really low, you actually will stop glomerular filtration, and this is what happens when the kidneys shut down in acute renal failure. So you end up not being able to filter the blood at all, you're not producing any urine, and all those waste products will build up and then that will kill you. 
There are a number of forces that affect glomerular filtration. So one of them is the high blood pressure that's in the glomerulus in this capillary bed. So remember it's at 60 millimeters of mercury. And the reason that the blood pressure is so high in the glomerulus is because the efferent arterial has a more narrow diameter than the afferent arterial coming in. So because the efferent arterial has a smaller diameter, not as much blood can exit as what's coming in through the afferent arterial. So the blood will back up into the glomerulus, that capillary bed, and that will increase the blood pressure of the glomerulus up to 60 millimeters of mercury. And the blood pressure is gonna favor filtration, pushing the plasma out into Bowman's capsule. The other force that favors filtration is the osmotic pressure of the filtrate out here in Bowman's capsule. And remember osmotic pressure is due to proteins, but there are no proteins out here in the filtrate normally because you've got that basement membrane that's on the outside of the capillary wall that prevents the proteins from going through those big holes in the capillary walls in the glomerulus. So that osmotic pressure of the filtrate is, always, is usually gonna be zero. The forces that favor absorption, so pushing the fluid back into the glomerulus, would be the hydrostatic pressure of the filtrate. So the pressure from this fluid out here wants to push back into the blood, but that's only at 15 millimeters of mercury. The other force that favors filtration is the osmotic pressure of the blood. So that's due to all the proteins in the blood. And remember that water likes to follow the solute. So if you have a bunch of proteins in the blood, the water and the filtrate will wanna move back into the blood where those proteins are. And that osmotic pressure of the blood is 29 millimeters of mercury. So when we add up these opposing forces, because this blood pressure is so high in the glomerulus, it wins and our filtration will occur. And we've got a pressure of 16 millimeters of mercury left over when we add up all those forces. You don't need to memorize these strange symbols, but just realize that because the blood pressure is so high in the glomerulus, that's going to favor filtration and filter that plasma out into Bowman's capsule to make the filtrate, which will then start down the proximal convoluted tubule. The glomerular filtration rate is really important to know. We abbreviate this as GFR. The GFR is just the amount of filtrate produced by both of the kidneys per minute. So the GFR is normally gonna be 125 mils of filtrate that's produced by both kidneys per minute. And then if we convert that, that's 180 liters per day, which is about 50 gallons of filtrate that's produced by the kidneys every day. That would be a lot to urinate. So luckily we don't urinate all that out. Um, we're gonna reabsorb 99% of that filtrate because when we do our filtration at the glomerulus, we're not picky about what we filter out. So we wanna reabsorb and save a lot of the good things like glucose and amino acids and vitamins. And also we're gonna reabsorb a lot of the water as well. So we end up reabsorbing 99% of the filtrate and only urinate about one to two liters per day. So that's much more manageable. Out of the plasma that is entering the kidneys, we're not gonna filter 100% of the plasma each time it goes through we're only gonna be filtering out 20% of the plasma. The reason we do that is if you removed 100% of the plasma from the blood, you would just be left with the cells and you'd have the sludge which would not flow. So we're only gonna take out 20% of the plasma at a time. But the kidneys are working really hard and they do end up filtering the entire plasma volume every 22 minutes, so they're really busy. If we take a look at other systemic capillaries in the body, they're only filtering three liters per day. Whereas in the kidneys, we're filtering 180 liters per day. So the glomeruli are much more efficient filters than other capillary beds in the body. And there's two reasons for that. So make sure you star this and know this. 
glomerular like end up filtering a lot more fluid. One, because they have much higher blood pressure than other capillaries. So remember, it's at 60 instead of 38. And then the other reason they're much more efficient filters is because they have a lot bigger holes in their walls. They have those fenestrations. Whereas other capillaries in the bed, that, in the body, they just have little small gaps in their walls. So glomeruli are much more efficient filters for two reasons. One is they have much higher blood pressure. And two is they have a lot bigger holes in their walls than other capillaries in the body. So they can push out a lot more fluid and filter more than other capillaries. This is just showing you the glomerular filtration rate. We have a flow rate of plasma coming into the glomeruli at 625 mils per minute. But we're only going to be filtering out 125 mils of the plasma per minute to make our filtrate. So if we divide the 125 by 625, that's where we get the 20% of the plasma that's filtered. So we're not taking out 100% of the plasma coming in because then we just have the cells in a sludge and that wouldn't flow. So we're only filtering 20% of the plasma at a time. You don't need to know filtered load. I won't ask you this on the test. But it's just a way that you can figure out how much of a solute is filtered um, per minute. So if you take a look at the plasma concentration of glucose, which is one milligram per mil, and you multiply that by the glomerular filtration rate, you're filtering 125 milligrams of glucose from the blood every minute. You can change how much glucose you're filtering and how much ends up in the urine by either changing the glomerular filtration rate, which we change by changing the blood pressure, or if you change the amount of glucose in the blood. So like if you're a diabetic and your blood glucose levels are maybe at 300, um, which would be three milligrams per mil, you're gonna be filtering out a lot more glucose into the urine. And unfortunately, we end up not being able to reabsorb all that and so we do end up with glucose urea or glucose in the urine with our diabetics. So regulating our glomerular filtration rate is really important because blood pressure affects the glomerular filtration rate. If the blood pressure is too low, we're not going to have enough blood flowing into the glomeruli. Their pressure will drop and we're not going to be creating as much filtrate. And then if the blood pressure is too high, we have more blood flowing into the glomeruli that'll increase their pressure. We're gonna filter out more of the plasma and increase the glomerular filtration rate. So we wanna keep the glomerular filtration rate constant because it is so high. And if you do change it, um, even a small change will have a big effect on the volume of fluid that's filtered. So there's four regulation mechanisms for glomerular filtration rate that you need to know. We have myogenic regulation, tubular glomerular feedback, sympathetic nervous system, and also the endocrine system will regulate GFR. Let's take a look at the myogenic regulation of GFR first. So the smooth muscle that's in the wall of the afferent arterial going into the glomerulus is sensitive to stretch. So if the blood pressure increases, we have more blood flowing into that afferent arterial, it'll stretch it. And the response of the smooth muscle in the afferent arterial wall is to constrict. That'll decrease the blood flow into the glomerulus. That'll decrease the glomerular pressure back down to normal and will decrease the GFR also back to normal. If the blood pressure gets too low, you don't have as much blood coming into the afferent arterial and the glomerulus. So afferent arterial is not stretched. And so it realizes the blood pressure is too low. So afferent arterial will vasodilate. That will increase the blood flow coming into the glomerulus, increase the glomerular pressure back up to normal and increase the GFR back to normal. So that's myogenic regulation. You can remember that because myo means muscle and gen means to produce.
Tubular glomerular feedback will also regulate the GFR. So this is going to involve the macula densis cells that are in the juxtaglomerular apparatus. And remember the macula densis cells are part of the wall of the distal convoluted tubule and they're chemoreceptors. They're going to sense the sodium chloride amount that's in the filtrate, that's in that urine. If the blood pressure increases and gets too high, that will increase the blood pressure in the glomerulus. So we're going to filter out more fluid from the blood. That'll increase our glomerular filtration rate. And if you increase the amount of filtrate that you're making, you are going to filter out more sodium chloride. The macula densa cells will sense that increase in sodium chloride in the filtrate in that urine. And then it will release a vasoconstrictor. And this is a paracrine substance, meaning it's just going to go locally, talk to the surrounding cells. And the vasoconstrictor that's secreted from the macula densa cells will tell the afferent arterial to constrict. And if the afferent arterial constricts, that'll decrease the blood flow coming into the glomerulus. That will decrease its blood pressure and decrease the glomerular filtration rate back to normal. And just a reminder, the macula densa cells, remember, are part of the wall of the distal convoluted tubule. So they're going to be able to sense the amount of salt that is in the filtrate or what's becoming our urine there. And then if the blood pressure is too high, we end up with too much salt um, because we're filtering out too much plasma from the blood. Then it secretes that vasoconstrictor, which will talk to the smooth muscle around the afferent arterial and tell it to constrict. And that'll decrease the blood flow coming into the glomerulus, decrease the blood pressure, and that will decrease the glomerular filtration rate. And now you're not going to produce as much filtrate and get that back down to normal. If the blood pressure is too low, not enough blood is flowing into the glomerulus that'll decrease the pressure inside that capillary bed. That'll decrease the glomerular filtration rate. You're not going to be filtering as much plasma out. And so because you have a smaller volume of filtrate, you're not going to have as much salt in the filtrate. The macula densa cells in that distal convoluted tubule will sense the decreased salt and they won't release that vasoconstrictor. And that will cause the afferent arterial to dilate, which will increase the blood flow into the glomerulus, increase the blood pressure, and that will increase the glomerular filtration rate. So now we're able to filter out more of the plasma, make more filtrate, and get it back to normal. So that's tubular glomerular feedback. How I remember that one is you've got renal tubules, these macula densa cells in the distal convoluted tubule feeding back on the glomerulus and affecting the glomerular filtration rate. So myogenic regulation and tubular glomerular feedback are pretty good at maintaining a constant GFR of 125 mils per minute when the mean arterial pressure ranges between 80 and 180, so it does pretty well. But if your blood pressure gets below 80 or above 180, then myogenic regulation and tubular glomerular feedback, they're not going to work very well, and you're not going to be able to regulate the GFR with those. But that's okay, because if your blood pressure drops below 80 and you've, you've really got low blood pressure, that's okay to decrease the amount of blood coming into the glomerulus because then you'll decrease the pressure there, decrease the glomerular filtration rate. You're not going to be filtering out as much plasma. And so you decrease the amount of urine that's being made. And so all of that fluid stays in the blood and helps increase the blood volume and increase the blood pressure, which is good because your blood pressure is too low. If the blood pressure is way above 180, then that's also good too because we'll have higher pressure in the glomerulus. We can filter out more of the plasma from the blood, increase our glomerular filtration rate, 
and that will produce more urine and we can urinate out more water from the blood and decrease the blood volume and help decrease the blood pressure. The sympathetic nervous system also helps control the glomerular filtration rate and the sympathetic nervous system will kick in when your blood pressure gets really low, so it gets below 80. So maybe you're hemorrhaging, lost a lot of blood, or maybe you're severely dehydrated. That would all uh, make your blood pressure lower than 80. So when the blood pressure gets too low, we're going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. This will tell the afferent and efferent arterioles to constrict. That will decrease the amount of blood flow into the glomeruli. And so you're not going to be filtering out the plasma from the blood. You're not making urine. And then that will keep that fluid in the blood, increase the blood volume, and that will help increase the blood pressure. The sympathetic neurons will also tell the granular cells, which are also part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, and remember these cells are wrapped around the afferent arteriole, and the sympathetic neurons will tell them to release renin. And then renin will eventually increase the blood pressure. And then the last thing to regulate the glomerular filtration rate is the endocrine system. So this is RAS, which stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And just remember that when you stimulate RAS, that will increase your blood pressure. And if you increase your blood pressure, you're going to increase the pressure in the glomeruli, and that'll increase your glomerular filtration rate back up to normal. So when the blood pressure gets too low, those granular cells, which are these purple cells wrapped around the afferent arterial, I remember they're part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, they will secrete the renin which will then stimulate the formation of angiotensin II and then aldosterone secretion. And then those two hormones will increase the blood pressure and increase the GFR back to normal. And we're going to talk about RAS more a little bit later. So just a summary of what causes renin to be released from those granular cells and the juxtaglomerular apparatus is when the blood pressure gets too low, we want to secrete renin because renin is going to stimulate the RAS system and we're going to increase blood pressure that way. So there's three triggers to release renin. So if the afferent arterial gets too low in their blood pressure, remember the granular cells are wrapped around that afferent arterial, they sense that, and then they will release the renin. And then sympathetic neurons can also tell the granular cells to release the renin. And then the macula densa cells, which are sensing the sodium chloride that's in the distal convoluted tubules, they do secrete the paracrine that vasoconstricts the efferent the arterial and increases blood pressure, but they also secrete paracrines that tell the, the granular cells to release renin as well.